due to affirmative action, they hired uh, uh, Martin as a field boss. He was 22 years old. And once I had got in a fight out in the fields, and uh, he was working with One Hope, and he told me, he said, uh, say, man, it's something about you, man. One day I'm going to make Warden, and I'm going to help you out. And I be damned, I got transferred from Cofield back to East Ham, and he was the senior ward. Right. He came up to me, I was standing in the hallway waiting to go to classification. He said, you remember me from Ramsey? This dude done got so damn big, I'm looking at him, damn, this big old ass. First, I was finna get pissed off. Right. Big old ass motherfucker this close to me. I looked at him, I said, say, I knock your big old ass out. He said, oh, you still ain't changed. He said, you remember what I told you on Ramsey? That I was gonna help you out. He said, I'm gonna tell you something. Classification don't want you at this prison. He yeah. said, man, they wanna lock you up, but I'm gonna talk to them so you can remain in general population. I'm gonna make you minimum custody. Yeah. He said, go to work in the fields for 90 days and I'll give you any job you want. And one day, uh, 90 days was up, I was out on the rec yard, a lieutenant come out there and say, uh, hey, uh, the warden want to see you. I went to his office, he had two more wardens in there with him and two majors. He say, uh, tell him about how, tell him about Captain Bad and Old Lord and Wildcat. So they ain't never heard me talk. They seen how open I was. And he asked one of the assistant wardens, say, you know this inmate? The warden say, no, I don't know him. Right. He said, this inmate, he'll curse your ass out. That warden say, you a goddamn liar. Ain't no inmate gonna curse me out. I say, man, fuck you. The hell you talking about? I don't give a goddamn about you. He say, warden, put this motherfucker in lockup. He said, he said, man, that's just how this dude is. He outspoken. So we stood in there and got to shooting the shit. He gave me a job or uh, assignment cleaning the outside picket where all the guns is. I go out there at night, take the guards ice, and I'm not no approved trusty and uh, clean the pickets. Only inmate do, do some shit like that. Yeah. He trust any inmate who had been on Ramsey, if you was assigned to East Ham, he'd look out for you. Because yeah. he, he used to tell them guards, he'd say, East Ham don't work hard as Ramsey. he said say, these men here, when they was at Ramsey, they put in a day's work. Well, Ramsey worked three times harder than East Ham. Yeah, but you know, all the prison units worked it hard as hell. But, uh, East Ham is 16,000 acres. Right. It was the largest prison back then. And uh, Ramsey is 12,000 acres. But it's two prisons on that land, Ramsey 1 and Ramsey 2. Now it's three prisons. Ramsey 2 is not named Ramsey 2. Now it's the, uh, God, the screen fella unit. And they got Ramsey 3. It's the terror unit. And Ramsey is no Ramsey 1. It's just Ramsey unit now. Now it's a minimum custody unit. They don't even have close custody, and they don't have medium custody. If right. you lose your custody and get disciplinary, you get transferred. Right. Don't seem like that's the same hardcore prison it used to be. Right. East Ham is the same way. They don't have close custody. You get close custody, that means you get transferred away from there. All those prisons change. It's a whole uh, it's a modern era. So people, uh, the Board of Corrections had to change up the prison system due to that court order action. Right. What I, everything the inmate got in Texas, it was court order. They never gave an inmate no privilege without the federal judge ordering them to do it. Because everybody, uh, all the senators and, and legislators, they run on a law and order ticket. And Texas is a red state, it's Republican, and they don't uh, cull no inmates at all in Texas. Right. It's one of the few states that don't uh, compensate, in, compensate inmates for performing labor in prison. They don't give you shit in Texas. Right. Three meals a day, clean sheets once a week, a mattress. You don't even have a pillow no more. The, the pillow is sold inside of the mattress. That's how fucked up this shit is. Yeah. Now they got flat screen TVs. That's because all TVs now flat screen. But back in the day, we had the big wooden boxes. I mean, the big square ass TVs. And they only had one TV per cell block. Now, it's two TVs per living area. In large living areas like the dorms, the modern prisons that got dormitories, they have four TVs. Right. And, and the food is, is horrible now because they got to buy the food. Well, back in the day, they grew all their crops. They didn't have to buy shit. Now, they got to, you get processed food and a, and a diet packed with carbohydrates. So if you got to do 50 years, you, man, you got to maintain your health. 
Because you ain't careful, you'll have diabetes right. or high blood pressure. That's why a lot of inmates are workout freaks. They love to be on that wreck yard. Me, I wouldn't miss wreck for shit. I, now I would be at work. I always had a good prison job. Right. I keep me a good prison job because I like to fuck with the female guards. And the only way you can do that and really get away with it is have one of those good-ass jobs where there's a lot of inmates not around. Right. So I work in the warden's office or I work in the, the prison hospital. Ain't nothing in there but fucking women. Right, so you kept your woman. I kept me a woman at all times. Right. At once I was working there, I had got the warden job. They transferred me from the hospital to the warden's office. And the guy working the warden's office had told me, say, man, the day I get ready to go home, come talk to me. Right. So the morning he was leaving, I said, hey, man, what you want to talk to me about? He had told me how to fuck the warden's secretary. He said, man, this woman loved dick. He said, she going to play hard and all that shit. Ignore that shit, man. She going to give you the pussy. Right. And she'll bring you anything in this motherfucker you want. You name it, she'll bring it. So one day I was up in the warden office. I'm uh, in his office talking to him. Yeah. So when I leave out, she's sitting, her office is outside of here. She say, uh, inmate, uh, my computer cable is loose. Will you get under there and, and, uh, and hook my cable back up? So she rolled her, her chair back. So I get up under the desk. She rolled her chair back up. Got her legs up in there. She ain't got no panties on. I'm up under the desk. I don't see no damn cables loose. I'm looking when I come out from under there. Pants all sticking up. She's there. Inmate, I write your ass a disciplinary. I know what you was up under that tape doing. You was up under there masturbating. So the warden is sitting right there in his office. I don't want to get loud with this motherfucker. I want him to come out. Right. And uh, she say, uh, yeah, I'll write you a disciplinary. Uh, go get me a cup of coffee. So I went and got her some coffee and brought it back. So that evening, the warden, go, he leaves by 5 o'clock going home. Right. She was still there. So uh, she called me in, uh, in one of the closet. She said, uh, say, go in that closet and uh, get me some copying paper. So I go in the closet. She come in. She get naked like a motherfucker. She said, man, I normally don't do this kind of shit. I don't do this kind of shit often. And, uh, man, I got to fucking this motherfucker. She kept saying, it may... What's your ID? What's your proof? I'm gonna write you a disciplinary. I said, bitch, my number is 007. Bitch, you know what my number is. <laughs> she said, you got a disciplinary, you motherfucker. I said, shut up, shut up. My me and I had that going on for about seven years. Yeah. She was a goddamn freak. She called me on the phone at night, and we FaceTime. Oh man, we had that going on for a minute, man. Yeah. So well, when I hear people on my channel be talking about a. Uh, when I do a video about a fat butt boy, I ain't have to fuck with him. I'm getting real pussy. Real pussy is better than bull pussy. Yeah. I would rather have no pussy than to fuck a motherfucking man. I ain't finna do that. Yeah. I wouldn't give a goddamn how long I was locked up. I'm not finna fuck no another man. That's out the goddamn course. Just because I talk about Other YouTubers won't talk about that shit happening. Right. They prison. It happens in every maximum security prison. Right. It happens in all of them. They feel like if they talk about it, people will look at them as fucked up or look at them as shady. Yeah. When this shit goes on. I tell a story, I make a joke out of it, but these motherfuckers were getting fucked for real. And, and contrary to what people believe, most of these people ain't getting raped. It's just like dealing with a needy ass bitch out here in the streets. She need money. She gonna beg like a motherfucker. A man will do the same damn thing. Look at all these fuck ass dudes standing around with a sign Talking about give me a five dollars and all this bullshit. If you would go to him and say, hey man, I give you a hundred for a shot of that ass, if he thought nobody didn't know about it, he gonna give up his ass. Yeah. If he wanted some crack or some meth bad enough, and that's the only way he can get it, he'll do it. So in an institution, special Texas prison, where they don't give you a goddamn thing. If you ain't got no outside help, you're gonna be broke. And it takes some time to learn how to hustle in prison. You're just not gonna go to prison and start hustling. Unless you're a hell of an artist or you're a tattoo artist. You got to have something. Then you're going to need money to buy the ink, to buy the tattoo gun. So everybody needs money. Right. The majority of these people are not being raped. They straight up just tricking their ass off, just like these needy ass bitches out here trick their pussy off. Right. 
How you think your average woman get drugs? She ain't got no motherfucking money. She use her pussy. Yeah. That's how she get the dope. I done been up in a dope track and watched them youngsters how they handle. That was a pretty ass snow bunny come up in there begging for dope. Man, about 10 of them youngsters fucked up. Yeah. They kept her high, then they threw her ass out. Yeah. But they used to this all the time. There's plenty of women come to the trap to score. So in a prison, it worked the same goddamn way. Why you gonna rape them when this motherfucker walk around here who got a 75 year sentence and he running out of toothpaste? He ain't got no prison hustle or he ain't got a good prison job he can hustle on. So next thing he got to hustle with is his ass. Right. So it works the same way. Now it is some people get raped here and there, but now they got the safe prison act. You go tell one of these modern wardens or the gang officer, this inmate raped me. They finna take immediate action. They coming with a whole team and lock his ass up. They ain't gonna even play with him. And if you can prove that's rape, they will press charges on his ass for rape. Right. And he's going to administrative segregation. So it's a whole different prison between then and now. Even Wildcat was a hard ward. He didn't allow no rape. You can trick him out of it, scare him out of it, whatever you do. But if you just wrestle a motherfucker out and take his ass, right. he was going to have them inmate guards beat the hell out of you. He didn't even allow that. Now, you got played out of your ass, that's on you. Right, people was like basically like gambling on their ass. Yeah, you gambling on your ass, you borrowing shit you can't pay. Well, your next thing you got to pay with is your ass. That's what you, in essence, telling a dude. Hey, I ain't got the money, but I got this ass to pay with. So, uh, people wasn't just dry ass getting raped, even though it do happen because you're in a goddamn prison. But it's not happening on the regular. Like people think, guys just going around raping people every day. No, some people are scared to death when they get there. I've right. seen some guys, uh, m not nobody even fuck with them yet, and they talking about getting them a husband. They so goddamn scared. They see all that fighting and all that shit, know they can't fight, they try to get them a husband, somebody who will fight for them. Right. But uh, it's, it's a lot of bullshit go on, but under this new prison, they will file charges on your ass. If a guy go tell him he been raped, you can bet you go in the lockup. Yeah. And if you tell him the truth, he is fucked. Especially you, he get caught up in your housing area, he not assigned to that cell. It's a wrap for him. You won't be seeing him to eight or nine years. His ass is going to be in lockup.